We are less than a month out from the Masters where John Rahm will look to defend his title at Augusta National. This will be the first time we're going to see the former world number one compete alongside PGA Tour players since he left for Lib Golf back in December. On Tuesday, Rahm spoke during a video conference call for the Masters and gave a candid response about not competing on the PGA Tour. Here's what Rahm had to say and in his statement, he said, I'm not going to lie for everybody who said this would be easy. Some things have been, but not being able to defend some titles that mean a lot to me hasn't. I love Palm Springs, for example. I've been able to win there twice. Riviera is about as charismatic a golf course as we have. It's definitely a week that's fantastic for a lot of us, and it's a fan and player favorite. Not being there was, t was difficult. I still watch the broadcast. I still watch golf because I love watching it. But it's hard. It's hard not to be at the Phoenix Open at the end of February. It was hard not to be at Hawaii because it's another tournament that my family enjoys and I've done fantastic on. So, Eamon, uh, what do you make of Rom's comments? A little touch of FOMO there, isn't there? A little fear mm -hmm. of missing out. It's interesting. He actually seems, I, I buy the argument that Taylor's ours or was just making in our round table. I do think John Rom believed that he would be a catalyst whenever he left, that it would force things farther and faster down the road. And now John Rahm's realizing that that isn't actually going to happen anytime soon, that there, there is progress, one assumes, coming from this meeting, but it's not going to be hasty. John Rahm's not coming back to the PGA Tour with his pockets full anytime soon, regardless of what he may have been told by anyone who was encouraging him to go over there. And it seems a little poignant, some of the comments that he realizes that he's kind of missing out on events that mean something to him, that mean something to his family. But ultimately, this is a lesson all the live guys have had to learn, that decisions have consequences. And particularly around the world rankings, you hear them talk as though they ought to be insulated from the decisions they made and the consequences of those decisions. That's, this is, could not have been a clearer case for John Ram. He'd had a year and a half of advance notice what happens to PGA Tour players who go to live. You don't play regular PGA Tour events anymore. That may change at some point, he, but he sounds surprised by a decision that he made or the consequences of it that he just shouldn't be surprised by. 100% agree. I, I appreciate how introspective John is, and I think part of what makes John so impressive is English second language and how he's developed uh, one of the most thoughtful guys when it comes to once he's in front of a mic and meeting with the media. But to and however much it was reported anywhere from what 250 to 400 million or something like that big payday to go to live back in December now two months later he's talking about unification and saying wistfully how he's watching golf channel thanks for the the pub or watching golf period and seeing tournaments that he won at that he can't defend at it's like you can't get the bag and then we'll kind of say oh well let's get everyone together it's like well no you left. You're not playing against the best players in the world. You do have some stars you play against, but not, now you're in this league that doesn't have the same reach, doesn't have the same coverage, and doesn't really resonate with the casual golf fan, and, and now you're realizing the impact of your decision. And you you kind of kind of live with it at this point because instead of this summer, everyone saying, oh, let's sing Kumbaya and you're, you're back for the FedEx Cup playoffs – it might not be till 26 or 27. Like, this is the road you're taking for three years. So you got to look in the mirror and just own it. And he did make some other comments when he, he's very much aware of what Scotty Scheffler is doing out there. Scotty, clearly the undisputed number one in this game right now. But you, you get the sense John Ram would like to dispute that. But John Ram ain't playing against Scotty Scheffler anymore. And he did point out that last year he played eight times before he got to Augusta National and won the Masters. This year he will play five. He will play his next event the week before the Masters at Trump Doral, a live event. He didn't play the week before the Masters last year. So there's a lot of changes in the run-up to his defense of the Masters title this year. And it's going to be really interesting to see if any impact that has on him. Big time. And it was interesting because he said uh, there are three or four spots I'd like to play. That put a, put a schedule from five to eight or nine events. So he was kind of thinking out loud the new normal you can't really pick and choose when you play. If you're on the Live Golf Tour, your plan when they tell you, okay, this is how your schedule is going to look leading up to the majors. He's going to have to figure out how to get his game peaking for Augusta if he's going to capture that green jacket for the second straight year.